thank you for life, Holy Spirit. Receive exaltation and honor. Receive all the glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for life, for healing, for prosperity, for your will. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be adored, Holy Spirit. Receive all exaltation and honor. In the name of Jesus, we worship you. We exalt, we magnify you. Thank him for everything that he's doing right now and what he will continue to do in your lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabababa. Mazuko Torobolika Namasikataba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We exalt, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. In the name of Jesus. Give him all glory. I just want you to invite someone. Let us have a great fellowship today. Let us be great in this fellowship today. Send this message to somebody. Invite them to come. Call your friends, call your family members, call your enemies also. Let's just do justice to the will of God today. I'm very excited. The word for us today is greater glory. Greater. It has to be greater. It has to be greater. It must be greater. We give you all exaltation and honor. We worship you, Lord, for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified. Amen. I see you. God bless you. Let's just share this on our walls. Let's share it. Give it give it as a gift to somebody. Let somebody receive a gift from you today. The gift of the word. The Bible says the entrance of the word giveth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking not just be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to the holy name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask for utterance. Speak to us. Use us out as your mouthpiece. Use us to fulfill thy will today. Lord, we commit ourselves unto you as a living sacrifice that you make your name mighty in us. In this hour that we are going to be with you, let it be an impactful hour, an hour of transformation, an hour of glory, an hour of blessings, an hour of miracles. Makutorubu sakataba likata shikotobu. Rikutorubu sakatababa. Makarar balikonubu sakataba. Bless him today. Exalt his holy name. Lord, thank you for all that you are doing and continue to do in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for taking over our vocal cord, speaking to us, and making your name be great and manifest. By manifesting yourself in everyone that is hearing the sound of our voice now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I just want us to go straight to the word of God. We are talking about greater glory. Every glory that the devil has stolen or delayed or hindered, we are bringing it back. Whether it is from anywhere that your destiny has been mortgaged. Is it because of what you did, what your ancestors did? what your family did, something in your bloodline that is not allowing you to excel and telling you that you are coming back. I want you to say to yourself, I'm coming back. In the name of Jesus, God will become God today. He must make his voice manifest in you by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to read this, a couple of scriptures, but I want us to pray also today. 
Today is a day that we are going to pray, and we are going to pray the will of God. Amen. Greater glory, greater glory is what is coming to your way right now in the name of Jesus Christ. But I want you to see something. You know, sometimes nothing happens for nothing. Things does not just happen. The devil is out there seeking for wound to devour, you know, fighting fervently and continually, trying to put down the children of God. But we will not let him. Not anymore. He shall not win in your life, not in your family. He cannot win. Greater glory. Let's go to the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said in the book of Haggai chapter 2, God is saying this word and I read it to you. I want you to hold to every word that I speak in this book of Haggai chapter 2 verse 9. The Bible said the glory of this later house shall be greater. I want you to say my glory shall be greater. The glory of my family shall be greater. The glory of our ministry, business, job, career shall be greater than of the former says the Lord of hosts, and in this place, in my life, in, in our vicinity and proximity, in this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Let's read it again, Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. The glory of this later house shall be greater, hallelujah, than the former. I don't know what glory you have seen before. What you will have now, going forward, shall be greater. So I want you to say greater glory shall become my portion. Greater glory is my portion right now in the name of Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you, many people have not been able to even enjoy the former glory, talk less of having the new one show up. There is, the Bible says, it's not of him that will it nor run it, but it's of God that showeth mercy. Today we're going to pray because the devil is not giving up. If you think that COVID is just going to go away, some people I've spoken to doctors, experts that have been in the field, and uh, they, they told me that COVID have been have come to stay here with us. We just have to learn to live around it. This is just one trick of the devil, and there are numerous illness and infirmities that have been cast out. But you will not die. Neither will your family members die. Hallelujah! You shall live to declare the counsel of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus Christ, let's go to the word. Oh, rabba, 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 rabba. Paul was writing to the church of Corinth. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, for a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. So his problem is not that he's not getting opportunities, but there was no way to take those opportunities. A great door, 1 Corinthians 16, a great door, a great door, Verse 9, of effectual, a great door and effectual is open. I don't know how many of you doors are opening, but you cannot take advantage of those doors because the devil keeps fighting you. Many of you, you have been proposed to, but it has never resulted to marriage. Some of you have started businesses, but those businesses did not yield anything. Some of you, you are in your second or third or fourth journey of life. And every time you try to make a headway, the devil push you back. Paul said a great door, great door, great door, and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. So we're going to talk about the adversaries and we'll come back and pray. Because if there's door that is open, that means there's a possibility of greatness in you. Even though you have not been able to maximize that potential to become that which God has called you to be. But there is that greatness in you. And whatever is trying to stop that greatness, we cause it from its root today. In the name of Jesus, if lifestyle or character or sin is the issue, we ask for the spirit of repentance. Let the power of God come and cleanse you. Let the blood speak for you by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to follow me as we go uh, gradually here today. Book of Psalm 96, verse 8. The Bible says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. Give unto the Lord the glory. Many of us today, after this word, 
you will send an offering to God. The word is talking about the glory of God responding to it with an offering. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. We're talking about greater glory. One of the greatest ways to access that greater glory is bring an offering. Psalm 96 verse 8. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Don't just say, I honor you, O Lord, I worship you, I magnify your holy name. It's good to say all those things, but God said, bring an offering. Something substantial. The Bible says, honor the Lord thy God with thy substance. When you bring it, accompanied with all the praises and the worship and the song, you will see it does. Let, the, let your eyes of understanding be open today. As we begin to fight those adversaries that are hindering you from becoming great, the Bible says a great door of effectual is open. But there are many adversaries. Every adversary that have hindered your glory, hindered you from shining, that is coming from anywhere today, we cast them from their roots and we send them back in the name of Jesus. Take back your glory. Take back that which belongs to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Joel chapter 2. Oh, le katarabasa kataba. The Bible says in verse 25, God said, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worms and the caterpillars and the palmer worms, my great army, which I have sent among you. We are talking about restoration now, greater glory. The glory is coming back. Restoration of every glory that you have lost. Every advancement, prosperity. I will restore, says the Lord, Joel 2, 25. I will restore to you the years the locusts had eaten, the canker worms and the caterpillars and the palmer worms. We begin to come against every ca canker worm, every caterpillar, Every palmer worm, even though God said they are my great army, we come against every spirit of palmer and canker. Le kataraba, every locust. Let it go. We destroy them in the spirit. We send them back by the authority and the power. We repute them. In the name of Jesus, for the Lord have said, I will restore, receive restoration now in your marriage, in your ministry, in your business, in your life. Is it any part of you that have been afflicted? Affliction, the Bible says, cannot and will not rise a second time. Today, let restoration take place in your life. Let it begin to take place in your life now. Let restoration take place in your life. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, la ba 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 ba. Makoto robo sakataba. Likere ba shikataba. Luke chapter 23, verse 23. I want you to see something here. Luke chapter 23, verse 23. The Bible says, And they were instant with loud voice, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. The Bible said they were what? Instant with what? A loud voice. I'm telling you some of you, what has kept you from making it to the next dimension? What have kept you from becoming who God have called you? What have kept you from being in that marriage? Is somebody has spoken against you. Maybe whispering sometimes, it can be a loud voice collectively. That people have said does not mean that it is true. A lot of people are in jail today because somebody has decided to accuse you of something and even manufacture evidences and bring something to prove what they have said, that it is right. In this digital age, we are not neglecting the power of media is very powerful. There's nothing that cannot be created with the media, but I want you to know that whatever voice have spoken against you, just a word, even Jesus Christ. I want you to read again, Luke chapter 23, 23, Jesus Christ himself. This is God in human form, but the voices of the evil men prevailed. Luke 23, 23, and they were instant 
with a loud voice. They were instant. They, they didn't give a, you know, a space. It was instantaneous with loud voices. So their voice were not just one voice. It was a, a multiple layers of voices requiring that he might. It's not that they were pleading. They, they were requiring, they were commanding that he might be crucified. And we know what happened. Pontius Pilate was looking at them and he didn't know what to do. And the Bible said, and the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. That is why we are going to celebrate Easter. And Jesus was crucified because somebody said that this is what he said. There was no evidence, but people just said it. And collectively, they were coming out to accuse him. And that accusation, one way or the other, began to prevail. Let me tell you today, everyone that has spoken against you, we come against every voice from your ancestral lineage, bloodline, both paternal or maternal, every voice of the enemy, every voice from the city where you live today, voices in your place of work, in your community, every voice that the devil have used to keep you bound, every voice that they have used to destroy your marriage, your destiny, your business, your ministry, every voice today will begin to shut them up. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, Verse 17, there is no weapon that is fashioned against you that shall prosper. And every tongue that will rise up in judgment against you, you shall likewise condemn. Today we come against every voices from the pit of hell. Every voice that is standing against you, even in judgment in the throne of God. The Bible said, and the devil accused Job. But Job was not there. And Job was found guilty. Today, any voice that will speak against you in the heavenly, the Bible said, Revelation 12, verse 11. And the Bible said, and the accuser of the brethren who accused them day and night, oh, la katarabababa, everyone that will stand and speak against the wish and the will of God in your life will silence that voice. For the Bible said, oh, la katarabababa, and every tongue that will rise up against you in judgment. Not you will not just be looking at the tongue, you shall condemn it today. Begin to condemn every backbiting and gossip, every voice of the enemy in the spirit and in the physical that have tried to enslave you, that are, is trying to snare you into traps, that is trying to keep you bound, that is trying to corner you in any form or way so that the glory shall be departed of you. We cancel every voice, we come against it by the authority. Every speaking voice is it in the atmosphere of the galaxies. I want you to see this again. Oh, Luke chapter 23, verse 23. This was Jesus Christ in his human nature and form. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. They were instant. They were vicious. They were consistent. They said, no, he has to die. Everyone that is requiring that you should die in the spirit, man or woman, spirit or, or physical things, witches or wizardry, principalities or powers, we cancel their voices. We destroy what they say. We come against them in the name of Jesus. We nullify everything they have said against you, against your ministry, your family, your, your, your job, your, your, your bloodline, everything they have said about your marriage, oh, your career, your job. The Bible said they were gathered and they were requiring, it's not that they were asking, they were not even pleading. The Bible said they were requiring that Jesus should be crucified with a loud voice. Their voices were loud. They required, say, crucify him. Their voices were loud. The Bible said the voices of them and the voice of the chief priest prevailed. Every prevailing voice that have prevailed over you before. Today you stand as a son and begin to condemn. The Bible said every tongue that will rise up against you in judgment, you shall likewise condemn. Condemn every voice from any man or woman, dead or alive, that is speaking and continue to speak against you. Whatever have been spoken against you in the past that the devil keep bringing back to keep you bound. Many people have been snared with voices. Today, we rebuke and resist that voice. 
The Bible says, rebuke the enemy and he shall flee from you. We resist every lying tongue against your life. We come against every frustrating demon, every occultic power. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Look at the book of Acts 22, verse 24. The Bible says, and they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. This is somebody that was given an audience. I don't know where your name has been mentioned for promotion. Somebody has said something against you. Oh, Lekara Baba Baba. Maybe you have been marked for some kind of elevation. You have been marked for blessings. But there are people that were given audience, directly or indirectly. And through that audience that they, they got, they began to say something. The Bible said, and they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. Whoever is planning to, to destroy your life from existing, whether they are humans or demons, because I want you to know that the devil has a voice. And the devil speaks, he's a good judge. He knows how to, um, what's he called, um, litigate in the spirit. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. But today, his, his plans will not work because all judgments, John chapter 5, 22, have the father committed unto the son. Whoever has judged you wrongly, or is judging you wrongly, or will judge you wrongly, Anyone that is speaking against your fruitfulness, your success, your promotion, your elevation, oh, la Kataraba, anyone that is speaking against your life today, we stand in the name of Jesus and begin to cancel that word. The Bible says, and they gave the audiences, and the Bible says, and they lift up of their negative voice, Acts 22, 22, and say, away with such a fellow from the earth, do you know what it means? For it is not fit that he should live. Everyone that is trying to do away with you, we say they shall fall in the pit that they have dug for you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, anyone that is de have, have decided that they will not be alive to see you succeed, that they will not be out there seeing you make it, whoever is standing on your way to your destiny, we remove them today by the power and authority. We come against them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I've been around in a while, and I know that there's a lot of things that happen. Oh, the devil is a liar. But we are going to continue to pray. I want you to see something here in the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter 9, verse 11. I just want us to read and we are going to pray with each one of those verses. It, 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 I, I, I don't want you to take this, this book of Hosea chapter 9 lightly. There's a, there are some strange words that were used there. And uh, I want us to begin to approach them in our lives. Some of you, where you are today is as a result of what was done against you yesterday. Some of you, it was done even before you were born. There were spoken words, there were things that were done, ordinances that was affecting your family bloodline, your lineage, your tribe, and it came and is affecting you. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Hallelujah. If the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? So even a righteous man in the faulty foundation cannot do much. So let's go to Hosea chapter 9 and look at verse 11. And we're going to pray with it up till verse 14. The Bible says, as for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird from the bed and from the womb and from the conception. In three stages, everyone that has spoken against you concerning your glory, we are talking about greater glory. The Bible says the glory of this later house shall be greater. That's what we are using as anchor. But here, there's a decree against a tribe, against a person, a family, a people. The Bible says, Ephraim, we know who Ephraim is in the Bible. Ephraim was a grandson of Lakatarabasi Kotobo. 
of Jacob. These are the sons of Joseph. And remember that Ephraim was the, was the first. No, Ephraim was the second son. Manasseh was the first. And the, the devil came. Ephraim did well because Jacob blessed Ephraim. But the devil came upon Ephraim. Ephraim became against the children of God. And God extinguished him from among the tribes of Israel. Removed him, utterly destroyed him. This was a decree that was made against Ephraim. I want you to see. And many times people are making such decrees. You might see them in church, they smile with you. You might be working with them, they are your colleagues. Or they are family members, cousins, nephews, aunties. The Bible says, as for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away. That is not your portion. From the birth and from the womb and from the conception. This is a, a terrible cause. Even the children that are not born will not come out with glory. If they even make it out, the glory shall be destroyed. That's what the Bible is saying here. Shall fly away like a bird. I want you to pray in these three dimensions, breath and womb and conception. Every negative thing that came with me from my breath, from the womb, and from my conception. Remember that David said, in sin that did my mother conceive me. In sin did my mother conceive me. Every glory that has been painted from conception. I want you to pray. Or from the womb and from the birth. Every glory that the devil tampered with in your life or in the life of your children, or in the life of your family members, from the womb, from birth and from conception. Let's go back from conception. When the child was conceived, every glory that was altered Every error that was imputed in your life at conception or the members of your family, maybe your children, your husband or your wife or your father, your mother, every tempered glory. Lord, we root it out now. We come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every glory that was tampered with, every error that was, Lord, put upon my life. Or the life of our members, the life of our children, the people that we know, the people that we work with, every tamper glory in my family, Lord, from conception, we begin to take it back. <clears throat> in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We begin to take it back. We begin to take it back. We begin to take it back. Every glory that the devil has manipulated from conception, we take it back now. We take it back. We take it back. We take it back in the name of Jesus Christ. Now we are going to go and pray for the womb. The Bible said that the, the glory shall be shall fly away like a bread from conception to the womb. Whatever was tampered with some children when their mother is conceived of them, their mother or their father will be engaged, especially women, when they are, when they are, when they are pregnant. Sometimes it's, it's a manipulation. The devil will hook them up with the drugs, or some people are hooked up with alcohol. So that substance will start to destroy the child from the womb. The child has not been born, but the child has been altered. And when the child comes out, they will not be complete. They will not be well. They will not be fine. Every glory that was tampered with in the womb, some people, it's because of the medical condition for the woman and the medications that we're taking. It's kind of altered the life of the child. And people come out, children come out being young. Some of them come out not, not um, articulating well, not understanding, not comprehending well, not growing as they're supposed to grow because something was tampered with in their womb. Today, whatever has been tampered in your family that has been tampered with before it grows, because when we are using this word of conception and the womb, it can be business. Because I don't want you to just be looking at a pregnant woman. No, that is a, a meta picture. But I want you to see, conception can be a business. You have the idea. You conceive it. But every time you want to kick it out of the ground, something will eat it up. 
And some of you, you have conceived, and now it is in a whoop. You are preparing to give birth to the business. Even the business is not yet out, the business is in debt. Something has happened. You have gone into a bogus contract. Today, everything that is in the womb stage in your life, that the devil has touched or tampered with, we recover it today. We bring it back. You remember when we read in Joel chapter 2, 25, God said, I will restore the years, not days, the years that the canker worms, the palmer worms, hallelujah, and the caterpillars have eaten up. Whatever has been eaten up in your life, is it at the womb stage? Many of you could have been so great in life. Businesses, you know the in and out. You have all the business plan, but somehow you couldn't start it off because something eat it up in the womb. You have registered the business. You have conceived it. You have everything written down, but you could not execute it. You could not deliver it. You could not give birth to that business. You could not give birth to that marriage. Some of you, you have been in relationship for a while and it's going well. By the time the guy is about to propose, something happened. Maybe somebody whispered to them, say, are you going to marry that useless man or that useless woman? And something altered that relationship. Now you lose seven years of your life. Ten years of your life is gone. Today, get it back. You might not get the man back, but you are getting your marriages back. You are getting your business back. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are talking about greater glory today. Oh, rekete rebali kata sokoto bobobo. Makata raba. Rekata shikoto bo. Liba gasaka tabarika na mama. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the third one here is from birth. Let's read it again. Hosea chapter 9 verse 11. As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird. That is not your portion. From birth, today, everything that you lost as you came to earth. Some people, when they give birth to them, their father died. So they start to grow without the father or mother. And the child is now vulnerable into many things. Everything that happened to you from birth, whatever business you started it, the moment you start, it's like the, you are, the devil is being unleashed upon you. It's like every kitchen sink is thrown at you. Today we begin to cancel that. We receive the, 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 the breath of that business again. We receive back. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, today we pray. Amen. Let's go to verse 12. Hosea chapter 9, verse 12. He said, though they bring up their children. So if you, the child escaped the birth, the womb, and the conception, the Bible said, though they bring up their children, yet will I bereave them, oh, la ba 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 ba, that there shall not be a man left. Yea, woe also to them when I depart from them. There shall not be a man left. The word there, man, let's, let's deal with the children first. Though they bring their children, Yet will I believe them. You will not lose anything that is in the infant stage. There shall be no miscarriage in your life. Oh, you will not lose your business. Hallelujah. You will not lose your children. You will not lose a new job, a new career, a new thing, something that is still in the infancy stage. The Bible says, This is a cause here, a very big cause. Though they bring up their children. So the business was given birth to. Yet will I believe them. And you haven't just seen a business that started and closed. Where we are yet today now, where we are, a young man I, which I met and I knew him, you know, from afar, where our church is today, started this, um, what they call it, um, this business of CBD. And when he was spending money painting, just next two, 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 two suits to our church, and he was doing a lot of things, decorating. And the opening was a very big one. It was a grand opening. They opened it less than a month. COVID hit. The guy lost everything. The day he was packing out, I saw him. He told me he cannot stay. He cannot wait. He cannot sustain. He doesn't know that the landlord is begging him to give him some, some months to just hang around. And he said he can't do it. Because the business has not started. So he doesn't have already made customers. A lot of ministries that were just coming out in this COVID, they died. Some businesses that people gave birth to in 2020, that business is, 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 is a story now because at birth, they made it to come out, but they couldn't grow. And it was disappeared.
today, everything that will be bereaved at the infancy stage, we cancel it today in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord said here, that there shall not be a man left. Yea, woe unto them that, sh that when I depart from them, there shall not be a man left. The word man, there is not just a male child. A man is a continuation of the family. May you be the man in your family. This is a cause. I speak against every extinguishing power that want to take away every ability in your family. There shall not be a man left. That means nobody will be left in that family. Today, God shall make you a man. You know, some people, some families, people will treat you knowing fully well that nobody will ask them what happened. They treat you so badly and they try to manipulate and do this to you, not with reservation, with impunity, because nobody will ask from today. When the devil come and steps into your family, whether physically or spiritually, you will be the one to defend the family name. The Bible said that your children shall meet their, your enemies at the gate. Your family will not be few. I say you shall never be few. There must be a voice and you shall be that voice. As you are listening to the sound of my voice today, May God make you the man in your family. You remember the impotent man? When Jesus saw him, he said, I have no man. You have a man. And you are that man. You are the one that your family is waiting for. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. God will use you to do what, what physical men cannot do. In the time that men couldn't speak in Israel, Deborah stood and became a voice. In the time of judges, she came and fought like a man. What about Esther? that in the foreign land, in Babylon, God made her a voice that God used her to restore the dignity of Israel. Today, be the man in your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, God said here, oh, that their men shall not be anymore. That there shall not be a man left. Yea, today you shall be left in your family. Your children shall be left. Your children, children shall be left. Your brothers and sisters, nobody will be found wanted anymore. We come against every spirit of death in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, amen. I want us to continue to pray. Hosea chapter 9, look at verse 13. The Bible says, Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus, is planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring forth children to the murderers. That is not your portion. Ephraim was planted in a pleasant place, in a good land, but he shall bring forth children to murderers. That means armed robbers and criminals will, will kill his children. Everything that he brings forth will not make it. Today, we come against anyone that have spoken because what I'm reading to you is actual people are actually doing it, executing it now. They look at a family say, no, this family, no, we don't want anybody to come out of that family. And their voice will be loud. Even when Jesus was not able to quench the voice of the distractors, as we read here, hallelujah, in the book of Luke 23, 23, and they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the Bible says, and the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. I don't know who is speaking against your life, your family. I don't know who have said that your children will not be useful to you or your children, children. Today we cancel it. Every spirit of man, every authority that has spoken, we stand in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Christ, the power that is above every power. Let us begin to come against everyone that have said that your children shall not live. Everyone that said that you, what you bring forth shall be taken by murderers and criminals. Everyone that said that everything you have labeled will not benefit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Verse 14, and we are going to just give glory to God. Look at verse 14. This is serious. I want you to look at the book of Hosea chapter 9 verse 14 very well. Oh, this is something else. And I want you to pray this prayer while you are by yourself. 
The Bible said in verse 14, it said, give them, O Lord, what will thou give? It's a question now. Give them a miscarrying womb and a dry breast. Do you know what it means? For you to have a miscarrying womb near success syndrome and a dry breast. A woman that has no milk cannot breast, breastfeed or feed a child. And that is also in a business. If you have a miscarried womb in business, you, you will conceive. You always conceive businesses. You conceive ideas, uh, but they miscarry at the execution. Some people are in debt today, in debt that they, their generation cannot pay. They started something and they borrowed money from everywhere. It was a good concept. The moment it hit the ground, it died. Today, every miscarrying womb in your life, in your family, we come against it. Your breast will have milk. I, I, I say your breast will have milk. You know, when a woman has breast milk, that means that child will be well fed. The Bible said, God said, give them what? A miscarrying womb and a dry breast. That means nothing shall be in them. We destroy every authority that is making that you shall not be fed up. Every power that have spoken evil or have vowed that your children or your children's children will not make it. Or yourself, it can be for you. It can be for your family. There are families that you see, you, you know that these people are well endowed with wisdom, but you ask what happened to them. They know a lot of things. They are very smart. But every time they, they are telling stories, you shall not tell stories. Today, the glory of this little house shall be greater. It shall be greater. Every lost glory in your life, we cancel it today. We break it today. Every miscarrying wound, every dry breast, let the Lord feel your breast. Do you know what God told the children of Israel? He said, I'm taking you to a land that flows with milk and honey. What is that? When you have milk, that means there is life, vegetation. Honey is you are going to be in enjoyment and abundance. Honey is sweet. It's very lively. Now, today, receive that, that grace. The milk and honey of the Lord, let it come upon you by the authority and the power. Ah, le caraba, any man or woman that have said today in the coffers, is it in the altar of God that they have decreed and declared that you shall have a miscarrying womb or a dry breast? We send it back to sender. The Bible said there is no weapon that is fashioned against you that shall prosper. And every tongue that will rise up in judgment. You shall likewise condemn today. We condemn every tongue speaking against our ministry, our businesses, our families, our children, our careers, our jobs. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You remember where we started? Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible said the glory of this letter house. That's where I want us to read now. We are no more fighting. We are restoring back. He said the glory of this letter house, Haggai 2.9, shall be greater. I said receive greater glory than the former. Every former thing, what you have in the later time shall be greater. The letter and the former. The glory of this letter house shall be greater. Marco Torobo than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, that place can be yourself. It can be your house. It can be your domestic area. It can be your city. And in this place, it can be your, your, your finances, your bank account. It can be your business, your job, your ministry. Oh, Lord, I use God's time assembly as a point of contact and myself. He said, and in this place, I will give peace. When you hear the word peace, this word peace is just English. It's, it's narrow to one thing. But peace in Hebrew is shalom. Shalom is blessings. When you hear, see a Hebrew person, that's why the Jews and the, and the Muslims, they greet the same way. The, 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 the Jews say shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, peace be unto you. And the Muslims say salam alaikum. It's the same thing, peace. Let the peace of God. He's talking about, I will give peace in this place, says the Lord. Your family shall be at rest. When we are talking about peace, not just that it's quiet, some people have that kind of peace that is in English, but they don't, they don't have what brings peace. When you have resources to settle every issue, you will have peace. A lot of people have died because they, their medical bills killed them. 
A lot of people have died because they have a vagabond son or, or daughter. A lot of people have, have been sick because of one thing or the other. But God said, in this place, I want you to use yourself as a point of contact. Say, Lord, I shall have peace going forward. I receive peace and the peace of God that passes through all the understanding shall be with me. Because the glory of this little house, you are a house. The Bible, remember the Bible said that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So the glory of this body, of this house, shall be greater. I receive greater glory right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want us to read Isaiah chapter 60. The Bible says, arise. It's time to begin to rise up again. Many of you, since COVID, some people have never socialized. Some people have not mingled. Some people have not gone anywhere. Life has shut down as you know it. But I'm telling you that that new normal is not the normal. You will smile again. The Bible says, arise. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Arise, shine. You will begin to rise again. Oh, Lakataraba, every dryness in your life is coming back alive. Every dry land shall become a forest. Oh, Lord Father, hey, Karababa, the Lord shall water your life again. He said, arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you from today. Begin to carry the glory of God. He said, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. COVID is here. There's a lot of things going around. People are still going to be poor. Things are going to happen worse than it has happened. But it shall not come near your dwelling because the Bible said darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and the glory shall be seen in you. Oh, Lakataba. As your glory begin to multiply, the Bible says, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Today, I begin to say, lift up your eyes. Makotorobo Sakataba. Let the glory of God come upon you. Receive the glory. Or get your glory back. Get back every job, every career, every relationship. Whatever the devil has tarnished in your life, begin to get them back now. Receive them back. This is a new day. A new glory is come. It's going to be greater than the former one. Every glory you have seen, God is bringing a new glory. There's a new sword in your life. There's a new power. There's a new anointing. Hallelujah. Oh, you are coming out. Everywhere you have been mortgaged, you have been caged, you have been put in dungeon. I say, come out, receive light in the name of Jesus. Arise from your slumber. Arise from nothingness. Arise from frustration. Arise from every, every power of negativity, poverty. Arise today and represent God very well. For the glory has been risen upon you. In the name of Jesus, right? The Bible says, lift up your eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together and they shall come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar and thy daughters shall not at thy side. Begin to receive your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. Your daughters and your sons shall come and not by your side. I say today, you shall never be few. Every spirit of smallness, every spirit that miscarries, Every spirit that destroys in the womb, every spirit that is, uh, 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 extinguishes things, we cancel it today. You shall never be few. You shall not be few. And you will not be ashamed. Every spirit of shame and reproach, we take it out from your life and your family. You are coming out. I don't care what has happened. It happened for the, for, for, for the purpose. But the Lord said today, I will restore. In Joel chapter 225, he said, I will restore to you the years. It doesn't matter how long that the locusts has eaten, the canker worms and the caterpillars and the palmers, my great army, which I have set among you. I will restore, so receive restoration. Ah, That was the Lord, what the God, the God gave me back after we came back into church the second time. God said, this is going to be a restoration house. And I speak by the unction and the anointing upon my life. Be restored in every area of your life. Let God restore your finances, restore your relationships, your marriage, your family. Let peace begin to come upon you right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. I want you to use that book of Hosea chapter 9, verse 11 to 14, and use it to pray. Use it to pray very well, because the devil is a liar. He can never win in your life. You are a winner. You are above and not beneath. The devil is under your feet. The Bible says, I give you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. 
and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. So today, nothing can stop you. You are unstoppable. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray with you here. If you have not received Jesus Christ, some of these things might not sound well. Even if you have heard it and you have prayed, the first thing is to accept him as your Lord and Savior. So I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess with my mouth today that you are my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. I love you all with all my heart. Let's continue to go and win for God. We never stop building. We never stop building. Just go out there and continue to move forward. Lord told Moses, say, tell the children of Israel, it is time for them to move forward. The wilderness is not your destination. So don't make a permanent decision in a temporary condition. COVID is just a condition that is about to leave. Life continues from here. We are happy because God has said, I will restore. And your life is restored for good. God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead of you. I will see you all tomorrow, okay? I love you all. Bye.